uh, when I'm talking about land use land cover change, what we have found is that uh, if you consider last 20 years or 30 years of land use land cover data from satellite images, there is a huge change in forest land to cropland. There is a conversion of forest land to cropland. When you are converting forest land to cropland, the leaf area index or leaf area density reduces, so the green factors reduces. And when the green factor reduces, the evapotranspiration reduces. When evapotranspiration reduces, the moisture supply from land surface processes reduces and that results into reduction in recycled precipitation as well as total precipitation. Secondly, whenever there is a change in conversion of forest land to crop land, the deep rooted plant becomes shallow rooted plant region. So what will happen when it is shallow rooted, again the water extraction will reduce and because of which again the evapotranspiration will reduce and the recycled precipitation will reduce, which will in turn reduce the total precipitation. So in this way, basically whenever there is a deforestation, there is always a change in the uh, recycled precipitation as well as in total precipitation. There are global studies which also said, said that because of deforestation, there is a possibility of reduction in Indian monsoon rainfall by 18% and so on there was a recent study in PNAS but they have not really considered the uh, you know recent change in land use land cover the you know uh, the added value in this work is that we have actually computed the realistic or what exact what changes that has been taking place in land use land cover over India and what are the likely impacts of that large scale changes and what we have found is that Yes, the results are, I mean, the changes are quite significant over the Ganga Basin and Northeast India. I mean, uh, yes, I mean, we, we, we quantified the impact. So what we did exactly, we have taken help of a regional model, which is known as weather research and forecasting model. So what we did, we have considered 2000 to 2010 period for running the model. So we have considered the large scale circulation pattern of this period. Now we have used we have actually coupled uh, community land model which is a land surface model with the weather research and forecasting model. Now in the community land model we have considered a 1980s land use land cover and 2010 land use land cover. So with the, for the same circulation model we have used 1980s land use land cover and 2010 land use land cover and we have simulated the precipitation. The difference between them will actually tell you what is the change because of the change of land use land cover from 1980s to 2010 because you have kept the large scale circulation pattern same and what we have found is that using this methodology we have actually got a decreased rainfall over uh, over the uh, Ganga Basin region and northeast India and regarding this also I would like to mention something else uh, we have also did another study but this is not because uh, with the change in land use land cover but what we did here one of my student Amai Pathak did this study with in collaboration with Professor Praveen Kumar from University of Illinois Urbana Champaign. So what we have found is that we tried to track the moisture to find out the source of the rainfall and what we have found is that during the end of the monsoon these are the two regions Ganga Basin and Northeast India where significant amount of moisture comes from the land surface processes. So that is a different study, but this study again says that whenever there is a deforestation, the impacts are more prominent in Ganga Basin and the Northeast India. So two independent studies, when they are concluding, when they are, when you can actually link both of them, then that shows the robustness of the uh, you know, results. And this is what we have got from this analysis. Let's first uh, discuss why is it because I mean why is it during the end of the monsoon? Well, when we are talking about recycled precipitation or any feedback that is coming from the vegetation, so it is it is happening like this: when the soil is full of moisture, then vegetation can easily extract that moisture and evapotranspiration increases. Now, during the initial period of monsoon, when uh, it is I mean when the soil is almost in dry condition because of pre-monsoon summer and so on. There is not enough moisture that will lead to uh, increased evapotranspiration and that may significantly contribute to the moisture source of monsoon. But during after July, after June and July, after getting a good amount of rainfall, the soil gets almost recharged and vegetation can easily you know extract the moisture. And when they can easily extract the moisture, the evapotranspiration increases and they fuel, you know, the moisture to the, you know, atmospheric moisture storage and that results into good rainfall. So, the idea here is 
during the end of the monsoon evapotranspiration is high and because of which recycled precipitation is high and total precipitation is high now the question is the second question is why is it so prominent in uh, northeast india as well as in the ganga basin region and not really in the peninsular india this is because in the northern india and you know the ganga basin region as well as northeast india there is a, some kind of you know internal circulation that normally takes place because of himalayas and other regions uh, there is always a some kind of internal circulation so the moisture that is being generated from the land surface that gets you know i mean that will be always in the same region mostly and because of which the recycled component is very high but if you are considering the peninsular india there is a huge wind flux that is coming from you know there is a southwest wind flux and that is not getting constrained by any kind of specific uh, uh, you know ge geographical characteristics and because of which uh, you know recycled component is not that high in the in the peninsula region and because of that the impacts of deforestation is also not that much high as compared to the uh, northern india and northeast india we cannot really mention this one is higher or this one is lower and it is very difficult to say because again all of them are kind of highly uh, correlated let's see if you are talking about large scale impacts let's say we are talking about western indian ocean warming that results into you know decrease in the land um, uh, ocean contrast of temperature and that results into moisture i mean low moisture loss so basically when you, as i was mentioning that during the initial period of monsoon there is a huge moisture loss that is coming from the arabian sea and indian ocean and that Uh, results into good rainfall over indian landmass and because of which the soil moisture gets recharged and then that results into again good evapotranspiration and then again recycled precip good recycled precipitation now the question is let's say if you may, if you consider a bad large scale circulation pattern which is not really favorable for a good monsoon year then what will happen that will results into results results into not really very good rainfall during the initial period of monsoon and that results into low recharge of soil moisture and that again results in low evapotranspiration and low recycled precipitation so you cannot say this one is uh, i mean i mean this is contributing more or this is contributing less all of them are related to each other and the you know and the target of i mean i mean and the objective of atmospheric science is to really understand all these linkages and model them in an integrated way rather than focusing just on a specific factor so they are all integrated with each other i mean the significance is quite important because i mean i mean whenever we are going for any kind of adaptation policies and so on we are mostly interested what will be what will be the you know future projections or we are interested in the climate change projection and majority of the climate models normally considered you know the increased greenhouse emissions because of which there is increased radiative forcing and so on but most of the impact i mean the future land use land cover change scenarios change land use land cover scenarios and their impacts is kind of not really very much considered and secondly monsoon is you know always believed to be a uh, you know believed to be a large scale phenomenon and local scale effects are normally ignored in majority of the analysis on indian monsoon but this is the first time we have mentioned that well land use land cover change that has been taken place over last 20 or 30 years that has huge impact and this should not be ignored so even if you are going for future climate change projections don't just believe on the global climate models but at the same time you just um, get the future land use land cover change do a regional model with the future land use land cover change land use land cover and get the future projection that will be more realistic than just uh, considering the global climate model outputs without considering any land use land cover change